Boom! What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, M-Y-S-T-I-C-W-O-L-F here, back again with another video. Today, I have a special video for you guys. And if you're wondering why I'm so fucking hyper today, because I'm off the gamer subs, which, by the way, great energy drink. It's keto-friendly. It has it's sugar-free. It has biotin, bite, biotin for a good, like, you know, you know, to grow your nails and hair and shit. It's a good drink. But anyway, welcome back to a new YouTube video. Um, it's been a while since I made a, another YouTube video. So I told you guys on my November updates that I was going to do my CD and vinyl um, video. And we're going to do it today. So, before I get started, please like, please comment, and please subscribe to my channel right now before I even get started. Okay, great, now you are subscribed to my channel. Welcome, I hope that you guys enjoy your visit here in the space that we call Mystic Land. So gather around the campfire, motherfuckers, cause we about to get lit and jiggy in this bitch. Now, before we even start the video, the actual like, you know, showing me my CDs, I gotta tell you guys why I got into like CD collection thing. I ain't gonna lie, motherfucker, I don't really know. I mean, I was 17 years old when I first started collecting CDs. I mean, I started receiving CDs like when I was way younger. I think my first CD, I think it was like Michael Jackson's um, Danger CD. And then I think it was 808s and Heartbreak by Kanye West. I did not like 808s when I was younger. I like it a little bit more now. It's not my favorite album, but I, I like it a little bit more now listening to it. But then I started collecting CDs when I was 17. My first CD was Damn by Kendrick Lamar because I really loved the album so much that I really wanted to buy it really badly. Like it was one of those albums where like I really needed a physical copy because sometimes there's so, there are a lot of like great albums that come out that year or like every other year that you just need to have physically. So you can just touch it. You can look at it. You can see the CD. You can freaking play it anytime you want. And it doesn't hit digitally, but physically, it's like, yo, you can look at the cover art, you can look at the credits, you, you can look at the, you can look at everything. You, it's in the palm of your hands. And then also why I collected it is because, again, it, it, uh, it impacts, it, it has a certain significance, has a certain impact when I was 17. And, you know, since then, I just started collecting and collecting and collecting and collecting. It serves like somewhat like a timestamp of like where my headspace was, why I bought that CD. And like why I bought it, this, that, and the third, and what that album did for me. So that's why I personally collect them. I know most people collect them because of aesthetical reasons and shit. And I'm like, you know what? You can have that. You can have the a whole aesthetic, you know, putting your damn vinyls on the wall. Which, by the way, good luck. Because that shit's going to get dirty if you don't clean them shits regularly. Like, that is if you're not going to play them at least. But... Um, that's not why I collect CDs and vinyls. It's not for the aesthetic. It's because these albums mean a lot to me at the time. They still mean a lot to me today. And I just wanted to earn a, a, own a physical copy of albums that I already love um, digitally. But I just wanted to have physically. Now, another thing about this video, how I'm going to order this is it's by year. So one section is for seven is for 2017 another section is going to be from 2018 and then the last section is from 2019 to somewhat of 2020 but it's still like a combination of both and then i also have cds that my friend wanted me to have um as like gifts or stuff i have i have bought them but these are cds that i've never heard before and i just now listened to so i have another stack of that of those cds that i will show you in a minute but yeah i just wanted to like give you guys like a little bit of perspective or a little bit of co like context as to what's going to happen while i show you these videos but as the video goes on you you guys will find out so without further ado because this shit is like five minutes long let's get into it okay so this section right here are the cds that i bought personally with my own money and shit from damn all the way up has been from 2017 and this is 2018 and then this is from 2019 somewhat of this is somewhat of 2020 and then these cassettes i also got this year as well too and these are the cds that i mentioned uh earlier in the video when i have bought it from a friend these are cds that i've never heard before until i actually popped them on the cd i'm gonna have my own opinions on those albums but i want to primarily focus on the albums that i bought that i first heard digitally and then I just, you know, happen to just have on digital. I mean, I have on physical. And then these are my vinyls. So these are, now if you probably have noticed already, there are some vinyl I already have on CD, so I'm not gonna talk too much about them because I already had mentioned them, but I will show you like what the gatefold looks like, the, you know, what the, the shit looks like, you know, the, the actual vinyl itself looks like and stuff like that. So we won't spend so much time. And uh, yeah, just wanted to show you guys that. Plus this is my little vinyl record thing. 
Yes, that's the needle drop. If you guys know, oh my God, you fucking know. Are you freaking kidding? If you guys know who the needle drop is, if it's one of those things. If you know, you know. You know, the internet's busiest music nerd. I got like a little slip mat from him. Looks freaking fantastic. I got this back in 27. No, I got this in 2018, and it's been there since then, and I love it to death. So, without further ado, let's actually get into the CDs. So, are you guys ready? Yo, let's fucking get into it, yo. So, the first album that I have, which is actually a gift for me, is Michael Jackson's The Dangerous CD. This one I got when I was a little kid. Still works to this day, surprisingly. I love the album cover for this. It looks really really like dark and i don't know it looks like a really creepy carnival that's about to happen like you're just entering michael jackson's world or whatever it's not my favorite michael jackson cd that i ever have i, I prefer thriller and freaking off the wall and bad over this but this is a, still a great album next we have is celine dion's all the way a decade of a song which is basically a compilation of all of her hit singles and songs from like from her previous albums i i don't really know what those albums are but this is like a little compilation little album of like all of her best moments all of her best songs just packaged into one i love this when i was a kid and i love it today fantastic voice she has a great voice man and i mean come on who doesn't know Celine Dion from the titanic my heart will go on i mean come on if you don't know that then you're you're you're, you're slipping up next we have is Watch Throne with Kanye West and Jay-Z. This was a gift from my cousin when I was 11 years old. I don't know why he gave this to me and I don't know why my aunt didn't find out, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, Jesus, the fucking, <laughs> the fucking disc, man. It still breaks, still to this day, man. Like, you know, I really like the texture of this CD. It's like pretty buff and shit. I really love this album. Um, Still uh, ages pretty well. Well, there's some not songs that don't age well, like I Can't Stop or some shit like that, and Ham and all this other, all these other songs. But I still love Niggas in Paris. I loved Otis. I love Murder to Excellence. Come on, Murder to Excellence, bro. Come on, yo. Welcome to the Jungle. No Church in the Wild. This shit used. To, these songs used to uh, Loki play on the radio all the time. I know every single song and lyric to those songs to this day, word for word, bar for bar, nigga. Come on, bro. Come on. Damn by Kendrick Lamar. I mean, come on. I mean, we shouldn't really have to discuss this album. This is a damn near classic. A lot of people, you know, tend to kind of disagree when it's like, oh, this is Kendrick's best work. It's not my favorite Kendrick Lamar project, and I know that he's made better projects than this, like Section 80, Good Capacity, and Tip of a Butterfly especially. Even Untitled and Master I like more than this. But this is still a great album with some unique concepts, and Kendrick is wrapping his ass on this, getting really personal, kind of giving you guys, like, I can't change the world unless I change myself type of flow, and just really letting his emotions and all of his flaws and imperfections and how he feels and just all the struggles he has to deal with as an artist onto this project and just the mind bending like playing it from forwards to backwards and backwards to forwards concept is fucking great with the wickedness and weakness concept great album man great album it's not my favorite but it's still a great album next we have is bryson tiller's uh true to self uh, i really like this album a uh, little you know uh thingamajig or whatever it kind of has like if i can try to get it out it has like what are those things called? That's one of those things like where you need light to actually see the pictures and shit. I don't know if you can, if the my light is not picking up those, but yeah, that's like his little brother. That's Hartley, that's his blessings. That's him like in the studio and shit. I know you cannot fucking see that. I really, I don't like it as much as Trap Soul. I'm not gonna lie to you, but I still like this album. There's still a good amount of tracks off of this album that I really fuck with. I feel like Bryson Tiller around this time, he did mention that he was really depressed at this time, so. You know, that to put you into context as to why the, the album is very bloated and shit. Next we have is Scissor's Control. Come on, everybody is sipping over SZA. I mean, come on, y'all. I mean, SZA, TDE, Signy, you know, First Lady on TDE, fantastic voice. I love this album. This album gives me so much Adventure Time vibes when I listen to these songs, especially when I listen to like Prom, and when I listen to Go Gina. Like, I just feel like I just wanna like watch cartoons and like have Fruity Pebbles while I'm listening to this album. And it also puts me in like a very meditative mood, like when I'm listening to like The Weeknd and Doves in the Wind and Love Galore and even Supermodel. Like these songs right here, and Broken Clocks are my fuck, is my favorite song off this shit. Go listen to it if you haven't already. Great R&B record from this woman right here. I shouldn't have to explain myself. Next is Scum Fuck Flower Boy by Tyler the Creator. It's, come on, fuck Tyler, come on, Tyler, dog. It's a great album. Um, I didn't expect from Cherry Bomb to this. 
I mean, from the teaser tracks that I heard from this album, it was fire, like, Who That Boy, and 911 Flash Mr. Lonely and shit, and freaking I Ain't Got Time. This album is fantastic, yo. Like, I feel like this is Tyler if he really wanted to make really fucking great music, and he fucking did, and he was in his bag on this album talking about his, you know, um, his sexuality and, you know, him kind of, like, being very vulnerable. Throwing off his cards on the table and shit. He was really in his bag with this album. I really enjoy that. And I really respect Tyler for his vulnerability on that album. Uh, next, we have Big Crit, uh, Forever is a Mighty Long Time. This is a double-sided album. Uh, basically, Crit right here, you know, clapping his hands to God, you know what I'm saying? Because he's a Christian, man. And then, you know, this is the Justin Scott side. This is the Big Crit side. One is, like, a banger side where, you know, it's just quality, great Southern tracks and then there's another where he gets a little bit more personal a little bit more introspective and shit this is probably one of my favorite double-sided albums that i ever listened to in my life i'm not gonna hold you guys i listened to this late 2017 i remember listening to the first few tracks off this off of justin scott's side and i immediately fell in love with it then i just bought the album without even listening to the rest of the album and i was super surprised i mean i wasn't really like scared i wasn't gonna love it but man i was pleasantly surprised of just how much i love confetti big bang 1999 and shit even oxcore get away come on with that sample come on i gotta get away from that bullshit that they on come on bro you can't get any better than that and then the justin scott side which is probably my favorite bury me in gold shoot the light the price of fame mixed signals is my favorite keep the devil off bro come on keep the devil off can't get any better than this um then we have two freaking classics from the man himself kendrick lamar my favorite fucking artist ever we got good kid mad city we shouldn't have to talk about this album and how great this fucking album is i mean come on y'all i mean this man this this album turned i think it turned eight years this year man this album you know went by bro like we don't want to talk about the storytelling sing about me literally my favorite song of all time bro you know good kid mad city shit swimming pools Poetic Justice, fucking backseat freestyle, the art of peer pressure, all these bangers, bro. Come on, we don't gotta talk about this. And then another classic, Typical Butterfly, fantastic record, literally a 10 out of 10, literally one of the best albums I've ever heard in my life. And this is another CD that fucking mm, wonderful damn piece of songs of just him being a, you know, uh, being pimped from the industry and just about black excellence mortal man with the interview with tupac i bro come on i love myself you these walls for sale interlude which is my favorite track on the album you ain't gotta lie complexion complexion with rhapsody come on yo, yo this is a fucking classic i don't need to explain this shit i don't gotta explain it it's just one of those albums where if you know you know my nigga mad villain mad villainy with mf doom and mad lib uh basically mf doom is the mc and mad lib is the fucking producer a uh, great underground uh, classic that I happened to stumble upon back in 2017. It was a great album today. Still great album to now. The loops, the samples off this shit, the rhymes. MF Doom is a fucking genius when it comes to his similes, his metaphors, and how he rhymes words and how he binds words. This nigga is a fucking genius, bro. Like, please listen to this album if you haven't already, man. Fancy Clown, my nigga. Come on, money folder, like all caps when you spell the man name. Come on, bro. Accordion, fucking meat grinder and shit. Curls, rainbows. Villain get the money like bro. He's just trying to get a nut in the in this world in this match. Some shit like that. I love this album, bro. Next album is Earl Sweatshirt's Doris. This album I stumbled upon back in 2017 when I was working at my summer job. This album is a fucking classic, bro. I'm not even gonna lie to you. This nigga got me through a lot of bullshit back in the fucking day and still is considered to be one of the best MCs to ever do it. One of the best lyrical MCs. Kind of fallen from MF Doom and shit. Uh, but yeah, man, this nigga is depressing as a motherfucker, bro. This nigga was spinning back in 2018. I mean, when he was 19 and shit. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I love, uh, con uh, what's it called? That fucking track with Vince Staples, uh, Burgundy. I love, uh, 523 and shit. Hive. What's it called? Whoa, Horse, Nights and shit. Sunday. Earl Sweatshirt, man. Look, one of my favorite artists of all time, man. Just. I feel like I resonated with Earl Sweatshirt at that time when I was like at my bag, you know what I'm saying? When I was like really at my lowest. J. Cole with For Your Eyes Only. I still love this album. A lot of people seem to disagree with me to say that this is not his best album. I love this project, okay? I mean, I'm not gonna lie, fucking folding clothes. Come on, bro, really? I wanna fold clothes with you, all right, all right? But this album is still, it rings home to me, especially with these songs like She's Mine Part 1 and 2, For Your Eyes Only and shit, Deja Vu, Mortal Man, Change of Neighbors. These are, these songs are still bangers. I wouldn't say like, you know, it did anything for me, but around that time, man, this album 
was fantastic. Still, for your eyes only, still cry up to that day when he was, you know, kind of speaking under the perspective with the father and shit. And, you know, like, she's mine part one and two. I, I mean, J. Cole, man, I love this, man. He gets so personal and gets so in his bag with this album. Nigga, Kanye West, the cause dropout. Do I need to talk about this song? I don't think I really need to talk about this album. Sue the Wire. Do we need to talk about uh, a workout plan? Do we need to talk about We Don't Care, Graduation Day, Spaceships, nigga? Slow James, freaking Get Him High. Do we need to talk about all these classics? No, we don't, right? You guys know this is a classic, right? I hope you know. You better know. This is my personal favorite Kanye West project. Late Registration, man, this album is rings home to me. This is one of the first albums that really made me fell in love with hip hop. Uh, Late Registration, in, in my opinion, my favorite Kanye West project. And I would say and argue that this is the best project. This is, I, this, these two projects are really like close second for me, but this one I resonate with a lot more. I have a lot more nostalgia with this project, you know, with Gold Digger. Um, some songs off of this project that I really freaking enjoy as well too. I think Heard Him Say is one of my favorite Kanye West songs and one of my favorite songs, period. It just brings me back to a time in my life when I was like five, six years old, winter time, Christmas time, and it's like snowing outside. I feel like Adam Levine's, uh, like his vocals, like kind of like bring that wintry quality to it. Touch the Sky with Lupe Fiasco, Gold Digger, you know, crack music, that real black music, Diamonds of Sierra Leone, Bring Me Down, Roses. Like these songs are really well crafted well produced and they're so heartfelt and they're just filled with passion you can tell that Kanye really was in his bag with these albums man Kanye man he crazy but I'm not gonna lie name one genius that that ain't crazy this man was in his producer bag for real for real and then we got college drop I think we got graduation which is my second favorite Kanye West project this used to be my favorite back in the day when I was a kid now that I've kind of mellowed out and I've kind of, you know, listened to more albums, this is now more my second favorite. These are songs that, some songs off of this album haven't really aged all that well for me. And I really love this cut, like this concept art, like the little gatefold for the CD is so fire. Love it, love it so much. Um, uh, the artist for this uh, record, man, they, he did a damn near good job with this the cover art and just the design of the bear and, you know, just him being left off. But yeah, this album, man, like some songs haven't aged all that well. Like I would say I'm, I'm not a big fan of like uh, Drunken Hot Girls or like that Little Wayne song, but I love, still love Flashing Lights, Homecoming, Big Brother. I mean, come on, Good Morning. Champion still a great song. I Wonder is still a great song. These songs are still quality to this day it still holds a lot of sentimental and nostalgic like weight for me at least when it comes to this album so love that album charles gambino with awaken my love i think this is his third studio project and this album is fantastic didn't expect charles gambino to go fully r&b with this album i mean we kind of got a little bit of like a prelude when it came to like Kauai and like his little like stone mountain mixtape that he used to make but this i did not expect to have red like songs like Redbone and the day the night I met your mama and, and you know all these other quality great well written songs and Riot and Boogeyman and Zombies and you know Baby Boy Stand Tall this you know this this album is I feel like this album is low-key a classic it didn't do anything to reinvent the wheel but it still brings back a really flavorful 70s R&B funk jazzy elements to it that I feel like if Charles Gambino really fleshed out his singing he could mm, this man really is multi-talented he could act songwrite produce rap sing. this man could do it all he could do it all tell me one thing that Taj Gambino can't do name me one you can't because he does everything open mic eagle with brick body kiss though daydream this album uh i have found out from needle drop which is you know then you know business the business the busiest internet music nerd uh this album i just kind of like heard out of nowhere um i heard it he gave it a very positive review you know what i'm saying so i just wanted to go listen to it it is a great album man this album was talking about like mostly the gentrification of his neighborhood and just how it made him feel and shit you know with childhood it's a very endearing project with a little bit of like alternative flavor but it's still rooted in hip-hop this is a this guy is extremely underrated you guys need to go and listen to uh open mic eagle man next album we have is 444 with jay-z Jay-Z is one of my favorite MCs to really ever do it. Come on, we don't got to talk about the Blueprint, the Black Album. You know, this man has done everything for the culture. Like, it's, it's just one of those things that you just don't really have to explain. You just know him, you know him. Um, I really love this album, and he got really 
deep and personal with this album kind of like with you know beyonce's lemonade where it was kind of a response of that also his personal but his personal life black excellence coming up as a black man uh his upbringings and everything like that uh this this album is so freaking good and especially no id brought the samples with this album bro some of the mixing was like kind of low-key with this but I love this project. It resonated with me. I love how Jay-Z kind of got very personal and unopen with us with this project. And the last two albums I got from 2018 is uh, Outcast with Aquemini. This cover art with the girl, you know, Aquemini and Gemini. Okay, we get it. I love the concept art for this and the cover art for this. This is one of the times where I was kind of going back and trying to like find albums to listen to, like the old albums and stuff. And like, you know, one of the things that I wanted to listen to was Outkast, because I loved Outkast back in the day. This album is fantastic, man. Great album, great concept, great songs. You know, Andre and Big Boy really go at it and go at heads up with this album with Be Strong, Rosa Parks, you know what I'm saying? Aquem and I, this, this is a Southern classic, man. These guys really prove that, yo, the, the South definitely has something to say. And they just capitalize with each and every single project that they've released up until that point. Section 80 by Kendrick Lamar. This one, I think is sold out. Um, this is not like an album where like it was ripped. This is definitely from the TDE website. And I don't know why I got it in this type of packaging, but you know, it is what it is. Kendrick's first project, I think debut project, I mean, for not counting, you know, Good Kid, Mad City, which was like a label debut, but this is like really his first project. Uh, this is the round of time when I was really getting into like getting to know Kendrick Lamar, Rick and Morris. I think ADHD was one of my favorite, like my, my first Kendrick Lamar songs I ever listened to in my life. And I fell in love with them even like from then. Uh, there's a lot of great songs off of this album. And I still go back to songs like this even to this day, man. It's a great album, man. Like, you know, again, it, every Kendrick Lamar project is great. Another Outkast album, Think Onia, which actually turned 20 years old today, uh, this year on October 3rd, uh, 2030, 31st. Man of CD, fantastic. Come on now. Andre, Big Boy, this is easily their best project. We can debate on the comment section below whether you guys agree with that or not, but this album, fantastic. Miss Jackson, So Far So Clean. Bob's over Baghdad. There's a lot of great deep album cuts off this album that I really love as well too. Like Explosion, um, what's it called? I think I'll Call Before I Come. We don't love these hoes. Humble Mumble with Erica Badu. This album's great. If you don't know about this album, please go listen to it and get reacquainted with these two because these are literally the best duo of hip hop and the best to ever do it. Next is Starboy, which I don't know why I bought this album. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I mean, this is not my favorite weekend project. It's kind of bloated with 18 tracks. This is probably my least favorite weekend project, but I think I bought it because I think it was on sale on Target and I just wanted to get it. Plus it has a Kendrick Lamar feature and you guys know I love Kendrick Lamar. Most of these albums, actually fun fact, the reason why some I you know listen to most full length projects well back then and back in 2017 and 18 is because if I had a Kendrick Lamar feature, I'm instantly listening to the rest of your album because if you're that nice to get Kendrick Lamar on your album, I'm gonna go and listen to the rest of your album. So that's like Loki what was some of my reasons why I listen to some of these artists. But yeah, this is the bloated album. Um Starboy and I feel it come is still one of my favorite tracks off this album, but I'm not gonna lie, I'm not in love with this album. I much rather prefer Abel with his later projects, like After Hours and then also his earlier projects like Trilogy and Kissland and even like Beauty Behind the Mask to some extent. But you know, it's not my favorite, but I still love, uh, I think it's a decent project either way. This is Damn, I already went into full length about Damn. This is basically the other version because I'm just, I, I don't know, man. I, I love Kendrick so much, I don't know why. Why did I buy this album three, four times? <laughs> basically Damn, but it's literally in reverse track list like it's from the last track the first track is the last track and the last track is the first track it's literally in reverse track list order like i why did i buy this i don't i don't know i kendrick stand man it's one of those things man one of those things untitled master kendrick lamar eight tracks you dig one of my favorite man this is a very underrated project by this man like basically a lot of cuts that probably didn't make it off the tip of the butterfly Twenty came out in 2016 got in 2018 love this project this is a really underrated collection of songs man Kendrick Lamar, man, this goes to show like what how his headspace was when he was recording and like, you know, trying to come up with the concepts of the Biba Butterfly. Like these songs, man, Untitled 2, man, I see Yigaboos, I see Styrofoam, Untitled 6 and 7, easily one of my favorite songs off of this 
uh, collection of songs. Just, 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 just go listen to it, man. If you're a Kendrick fan like me, you guys know how highly unappreciated this album is. Black Panther uh, soundtrack that was curated by Kendrick Lamar and it's music inspired by, you know, with the Black Panther movie. Rest in peace to Chadwick Boseman. Here is the CD. You know, I like how it had like the necklace of Black Panther of T'Challa and everything like that. You know, you got the TDE logo right here. Uh, this is a great CD, you know what I'm saying? Like, as far as movie soundtrack uh, curated albums go, sometimes they don't really, you know, do it for me. But this one, Kendrick really knew what he was doing when he was picking artists as, like The Weeknd and SZA and Sway Lee and Kylie for a movie soundtrack uh, album. This was really, really damn good. Um, and I have to cash on on the hype because uh, anything Kendrick related, I have to freaking own. KOD by J. Cole, which I actually had loved the first time it came out. Nowadays, I don't really like it as much. I hate when I hate when I love a CD, like I love an album, like first day, and then later on, I don't like it as much. Yeah, I still don't like this album cover and the back. For an artist perspective, I don't really like this album cover, but hey, to each his own, I guess. This album kind of tackles a lot of different, you know, with KOD, you know, King Overdose and, you know, Choose Wisely and stuff like that. It kind of low key gave me like damn vibes or whatever, but ultimately it kind of goes down to don't do drugs, kids, because either way, this kind of promotes a pretty positive message. It's pretty good, cool track software, but I still prefer 2014 Forest Hills Drive and his last project, uh, which is for your eyes only than this. We got Trap Solo with uh, Bryson Tiller, man. Look, this man got me through my bag from 2015, 2016. I think this came out 2015. Uh, back in high school, man. Shoot, my ex, you know what I'm saying? Like, she put me on to this, uh, this guy right here. And I really, really enjoyed this project so much. I feel like this is Bryson Tiller's best work uh, by far. Uh, I don't think Anniversary or his other albums have really done it for me, but this one, was the one Charles Gambino with Because the Internet. This album I had heard back in 2017, but I got it 2018. Man, this album is really fantastic, man. I don't really care what the critics say about this album. This guy really made a great screenplay, like how he was trying to connect everything from the internet, how we use it, how it affects our minds on our day-to-day -day lives and stuff. A lot of concepts, a lot of great ideas about this album. I still love 3005, Flight of the Navigator, man. I really used to love that song so much back in the day. But yeah, Charles Gambino, no? One of my favorite Charles Gambino projects ever next to Awaken My Love, Danny Brown's Atrocity Exhibition. This album is freaking insane. Literally from the album cover, from just how the album is designed, just, come on man this you just know like this album is gonna be a uh, hell of a downward spiral when you just look at the album cover when you just look at the cd itself danny brown this is one of my first experimental projects i've listened to and man i did not like this project when i first heard it but when i came back to it and kept listening to it easily became one of my favorite projects that i heard that year if this if i had listened to this project 2016 it would definitely be my favorite albums of this list year but man this album grew on me a lot like it's a very artistic way of expression ex expressing how he was you know when he was doing all these drugs a very zany a very energetic way to where you feel like you or you have an anxiety attack when you're listening to this album. It's so well put together. Like, shout out to Danny Brown. Next we have is Georgia Smith's uh, Lost and Found album. This album is really, really good. I love this R&B album. I kind of have her like right over there if you don't see her. I got it like off this CD and then also I got the poster with it too. Love Blue Lights, Wandering Romance, February 3rd, Where Did I Go? Teenage Fantasy, Lost and Found. This is a great vintage 90s early 2000s low-key like r&b album i love her voice on this you know what i'm saying she was really you know in her bag when it came to this album and you know again it just gave me like 90s vibes when i first saw this album cover just great voice hi hi so um problem i can't actually upload the actual full video because youtube only allows me to upload 30 minutes because i'm not jiggy like that so this is going to be a three-parter the two-parter is going to be my cd collection video and then the one-parter is going to be my vinyl video so i apologize for this inconvenience hope you guys enjoy part two coming soon all right peace